Hello. <laughs> so, I just basically miss connecting with you guys on a human level where I'm just chilling here, answering your questions and talking to you. That's really the only reason that I do these Q&As, otherwise they are the most egotistic type of content, I think, on the internet, somehow. It's nice to talk to you guys, and I miss doing that because, you know, there's nothing much to show you and we're all basically at home and I know some of you miss seeing the life, but the life is literally just me inside. So yeah, that's why I'm gonna answer a bunch of questions from you and it's gonna be some personal, some about YouTube, some about my concerts and music and my general experience. <laughs> so if you're curious about what my life has been like the past two weeks or so, I, I don't know, about a week and a half, two weeks, then stick around. I will give you clues throughout this entire Q&A and I'm curious to see if you can catch all of them in this video and I will read your comments and see. Anyway, here is the January slash February Q&A. I usually do these once a month, but I kind of skipped January for whatever reason, so here it is. Oh hi, I forgot to mention in my intro that these questions are questions that I've never answered before and if I didn't answer your question that you asked on YouTube community tab or on my Instagram, it's probably because I have answered it before in one of my many Q&As that I've done in the past. So I made a playlist. Everything is linked in the description. La in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video. That's it. <laughs> Let's start off with stuff about music because that is the main thing about me and my YouTube stuff, so. If you could bring one composer back to life to watch him compose slash improvise, who would you choose and why? When I first saw this question, I thought Liszt, because he's known to be quite the showman and he has so many improvisatory passages in his music. So basically you're guaranteed a great entertainment from him, but then I thought maybe it would get kind of old and perhaps obnoxious, not to say that he was, but I feel like it'd be more interesting to spy on Schumann because I love Schumann. And uh... next, this question horrified me when I read it. <laughs> Do you hit or smash the piano keys when you get frustrated or mad when trying to perfect a piece? I hope, I hope you don't go around smashing people's faces or hitting someone if they don't agree with your thoughts or opinions. No, I don't. Please don't abuse your pianos or any of your instruments if you don't play a piano or anything for that matter in the world. What did you enjoy the most about your past Dream Stage concerts? Can you believe I've done three already? <laughs> the thing I enjoy the most is knowing and of course seeing your reactions afterwards that you were there to enjoy the fruits of my practicing and my labor and just classical music because that is the end destination if I can call it the end I mean it's never the end but it's the final product and I'm always super excited to hear you enjoying the concerts that I did and it's really special to be able to have so many people come together from all different time zones, all different countries. That's just something that only you can do in the live streams. So thank you if you have watched any of my previous Dream Stage live streams. Do you think performing on a digital platform like Dream Stage will be more common in the classical world even after the pandemic? Do you enjoy performing that way or do you see it as a temporary thing? Many concert halls here where I live have live streams slash pre-recorded concerts now, which is fantastic during these times. I picked this question because you have a one-year-old who's also a big fan, so say hello to him or her, please. <laughs> That's really cute. I feel like everything in life right now is temporary because it changes so much according to the pandemic and just what's happening in the world. So um, I think... Yes, live streams will be more common, but more importantly, reaching out to an audience online will be a lot more integrated into the experience of concerts. And it's exciting that way. I think you can connect to a lot more people because pretty much every person is on the internet in some capacity 
Of course, there's something very special about playing in a beautiful venue and having an audience there to really experience the moment with you in person. That's going to be so much more special when we come out of this dark tunnel and... Next. Do you find it easier to perform for a live audience or in a recording studio in terms of levels of nerves and how engaged you are in each environment? And based on this, how would you describe your dream stage, i.e. on a stage with lots of mics and equipment but performing for a live audience who you couldn't see? I think I got used to the fact that I can't see my audience from last year's live streams when I did everything by myself. I will have a lot more experience in a recording studio later in this year, so stay tuned if you're interested in following. I can't say whether it's easier or more difficult. What made it easier for me to be on Dream Stage and why I appreciate so much those of you who really came along with me to this platform is because I did not have to stress out about the tech. What I do miss though, when you mention about the equipment and having sound transmitted through mics, is the opportunity to play with the particular sound characteristic of the hall. And a lot of times, I think you have heard me comment on this, the kind of reverb, the natural reverb from the hall, not the filters that you might apply to mics is a lot of fun it's kind of like meeting different kinds of pianos and adjusting to their particular personalities that magic or that element i do miss and i can't really express that part of my performance through live streaming but again what i said in the previous answer it's really special and unique to be able to play for a world wide audience yes w w a in terms of nerves i'm not nervous about the tech i just have to focus on the music and the level of nerves is really up to me and i always put a lot of pressure on myself just because i am just striving to be respected and also to play the best that i could because the pieces of music are so beautiful that it's just out of respect that I should play to the best of my ability and that's why I've put so much pressure on myself. And that's why I get nervous. Sometimes. Depends. I feel like I'm getting better and the more I do them, the less nervous or just the more acquainted I am with the feelings that I get. Next, could you please talk about tips for fingerings? You have five fingers on each hand and it helps to look backwards if you're trying to figure out fingerings. Cecilia, I am glad that it's clear to you how much I love and respect and have a passion for music. Have you ever felt so burnt out that you lost your passion for music at any point in your life? If so, how did you rekindle it? And what would you say to those who want to rediscover their past love for music? I've never really felt burnt out from music. I've felt burnt out or exhausted from other things that aren't related to me touching the piano keys. And I will get into that in the next part of the questions, but I think it helps to listen to musicians who you admire or listen to pieces of music that you really enjoy. And it reminds you how much you love the music in general, and that's usually how I get the itch to play or to practice. Sometimes I am perfectly fine with this, sometimes I just don't feel like practicing. And I am a romantic in that I listen to my feelings, and if I feel like I'm not going to get anything done today, I'm not going to go sit at the piano, even though, yes, sometimes I feel guilty because not everyone has the Steinway to be in their apartment, and I'm very grateful to have this loan. Who knows how long I will have this, but you just can't force yourself, or at least I don't believe in forcing yourself to do something like this because it's all about having a positive creative energy. Well, maybe not all the time positive, but some sort of creative, productive energy, and if I don't feel that, I'm not gonna play. <laughs> this kind of relates to the next one. Do you feel like your fingers don't want to obey you sometimes? I suffer with that like once a week. I know this feeling, and it happens, I'd say about once a month for me. I can't say precisely if there's a trend in why that happens. 
I just accept that. Oh, it's one of those days. It's okay. That's how I approach it. Let's talk about YouTube. Because you're watching this on YouTube. Why do you care so much about the YouTube algorithms? Oh, wait. I should swallow and not chew and talk. Why do you care so much about the YouTube algorithms? Really appreciate what you do. Thank you. There were a few questions about this. Another one from Joseph. Have you ever felt being burnt out in all your years being in this platform? Did you ever consider stopping? I'm just gonna read all of the questions related to this because it's all just one big answer. If you were not to feel the pressure that is currently being put on you to post videos continually, would you still be so involved in the creation of YouTube content? And regarding your overall journey, what do you feel that you've neglected lately due to this hectic period? I can only imagine how stressful it is to have so many ongoing projects. Would you like to change slash improve certain aspects? That's from Matea. Gabriel, how do you feel when a video have many views versus a video that don't have many views? Like, what do you do? So let's talk because I have hinted about my frustrations with YouTube and the algorithm many times, but I don't think people fully understand why I feel so pressured and stressed out sometimes. So hopefully by the end of the next few minutes, you will understand and continue supporting, I guess. So first off, I am very, very grateful that I am able to do what I love for a living and uh, I know this is a privilege and it's really all thanks to you this is all thanks to you and the fact that I have a roof over my head and be able to support myself despite the pandemic it's because of a few hundred really really nice people on patreon who have been supporting me and yeah I'm getting really emotional talking about this. Let me actually start from the beginning and explain to you why I do YouTube because I think a lot of you are new in the recent year or so. So the reason I do YouTube, there is absolutely no reason by definition for any classical pianist to be doing any of this. But in 2017 December, I was inspired philosophically and that's how this vlog endeavor came about and a million of things that have <laughs> come after that. I thought during my studies in college that the reason people think classical music is old and dead and uh, really boring, it's the lack of a human connection between the audience and the music slash the artist. Of course, the composers are dead, music is from centuries ago, so it is a very logical conclusion to think that classical music is not, you know, interesting. So I thought maybe a way to bring that human element that's missing just from the fact that the composer is dead is to share parts of my life, the behind the scenes of what it's like to be a classical pianist and what it takes to make music, perform classical music. So that's how this all started. All of the practice vlogs and the get ready with me concert vlogs my Q and A's of me talking to you is just a way for me to connect with you on a human level with the hope of bringing you closer to classical music because that is the ultimate goal for me to bring a larger audience into classical music through me. I mean, I'm just a bridge. So really the final product and the destination is the music itself, which is why it is so special to me. And it means so much to me when you come with me to my concerts, whether it was in person before or through my live stream concerts. I get really stressed out about the lower view counts and I get disappointed the same way that you would be disappointed if you sent out invitations to your friends to your party back when you were allowed to have parties and um, only two people showed up or only 10% of them showed up. It's the same exact feeling if you see all of your friends come of course you're gonna be super happy. If you see your friends come with other people and they all have a good time at your party, of course you're gonna be super happy. So it's the same feeling that I have when I post a video the first two days, I'm constantly watching to see how people are reacting to my videos. Are they liking it, commenting? Are they not watching it? Now with the algorithm, how it works is that 
if you show a lot of love and support for the video when I publish, it tells the algorithm that hey, maybe this video would be interesting for other people who are not subscribed, who are not the usual audience, and let's try to promote this video and bring it to someone else's recommended page without me doing anything specific other than hoping that you would enjoy my content and show the love for the video. The algorithm is a way to bring a large audience into classical music and support my mission of bringing a larger audience to classical music. Would I ever stop? No, because it's rude. <laughs> I never neglect our connection here and I know that a lot of you support me and because I still a thousand percent believe in that mission if I can bring human aspect back to your experience of classical music then a lot more people will enjoy it and I love classical music so of course I get really excited when a lot of people join in if I said everything hold on my camera's out of memory Wah! not again ah uh, to wrap up my answer excuse me so to wrap up my spiel about youtube like i said i'm very lucky that i'm able to do what i love for a living and that means that it is how i support myself also although mind you youtube it's not my way and my choice of making any living because when I do videos that I enjoy, like a bunch in January, and for example, this one, these types of Q&As, they don't get a lot of views, which means the ads revenue go down. So when I make videos and I see them getting low view count, it not only means that I have failed to bring in a new audience or a large audience to classical music because pretty much everything that I do here it's about something to do with classical music whether it's about my life as a classical pianist or what I do it's all related to classical music so when I see low view count it means a smaller audience for classical music lesser opportunity to grow the audience and also on the other side it means less ads revenue and that's why I am so thankful for my Patreon patrons and this is hopefully my only time ever to talk about myself but if you would like to support me and make it less stressful for me to worry about all of this and also to support my album year because I am making two albums in case you missed any of those announcements but I know that those who are watching my Q&A videos are my diehard loyal audience so hello and thank you and I see you so you probably know this by now but if you really would love to support me and if you have a spotify or amazon or apple music subscription it's basically the same thing on patreon except you get access to my secrets and my entire process of making albums this year and i don't want to do kickstarter because there would still be a gap between the end product and the beginning phase and uh, me doing it on patreon and sharing videos and posts about my process is to bring you along each month each week and I just think that is exactly what I try to do here on YouTube it's to bring you along with the behind the scenes and me being a human so anyway that's enough about myself I hope this explains to you why I get stressed out about my YouTube it is because it is connected to everything so thank you for your support and let's move on if this is a really long video, I'm very, 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 very sorry. Let's go to personal questions <laughs> from Alan. Do you consider yourself happy? Surprisingly, yes. I cannot say for sure that I am constantly in this state, but next. What's something you're interested in that's not related to music? Also, do you ever get productivity guilt? Feeling like you're not being productive enough? If so, how do you deal with it? Um, uh, well... <laughs> Why else do I say keep striving all the time? Be kind, keep striving. It's because I am a strong believer in being productive all the time. But I've also learned that in order to be productive, you have to be in a good place. And sometimes taking time to do other things and not get so stressed out 
it's also a way to be productive because it's kind of an investment into the future but also if I'm not practicing I'm reading or doing something else and those things usually relate to some aspect of work whether I feel like it's work or not sometimes I don't so um, I can't plank that long what's something you're interested in that's not related to music um, stuff that you've been seeing that isn't related to music in this video Ugh, I can't plank I used to feel a lot of guilt when I don't feel like I'm being productive, but recently, I'm in a happy place, so let's hope this continues. Fred, I have been watching your blog since you were a student. Oh, that means you've been watching me for three years at least. Do you feel you are an independent adult yet in the sense of having a career and supporting yourself, or are you still in transition? I think everyone is in some sort of transition in their life, especially in the light of this pandemic, but also in general. As someone who really likes to be productive all the time, I'm always trying to find ways to improve certain things. And I'm able to have some look of a career and be able to support myself because of your support. So, yes, I guess. I have my insecurities. I feel like now if you look at what I do, it's a lot about YouTube and my social media. So I am very much in transition in my career sense. I am very excited to be recording albums and to be releasing albums for you and have that be something for people to talk about and to listen to rather than just constantly seeing me make stuff on social media and YouTube. So, yes, I'm in transition, but I also feel like this is a constant state of life. How would you manage to keep a healthy mental health whilst being stressed about music? I don't remember a time when I'm ever stressed about music. I'm stressed about other aspects like YouTube and other stuff that have nothing to do with music. I can't really say that I have a healthy mental health at least not all the time recently, yes, but things can change and I can flip-flop but I think what I've learned is that you have to step back whatever it is that's stressing you out you have to take a deep breath, do something else talk to people in your life who support you and you can make it out of that stressful phase I mean, I went through a dark phase not too long ago and now I'm kind of in a happy place, although I don't want to overemphasize this to jinx myself, so let's move on. Do you think school encourages or discourages love for music? What tips or things do you think schools should include to make students love music and want to play it more? In other words, what is the best way to promote music, especially the classics to younger children and students such that they are actually interesting and not just doing it as a chore? In general, when you see a friend interested in something and really enthusiastic about it, you're automatically interested to see what's the hype and why the enthusiasm. So I think it's about spreading the positive, enthusiastic energy, whatever that means. That could mean a lot of things. So I am not a teacher and I am not in a place of saying what schools should or shouldn't do. Last one. Do you have a goal you most want to accomplish? That's a very broad question. Aside from the general mission of what I said about YouTube, improving my skills at the piano. This year, it's about the hope and the goal of you loving the album and the music that I record and also getting the traditional critical ears interested and also hopefully liking what I am about to release and what I will record this year. So hopefully you will support my journey and stick around. And I know that those of you who are watching this video and who have made it this far are the ones that are absolutely the most loyal to me so it's incredible <laughs> and I don't know how from my student days of this hypothesis that I had about classical music and to making vlogs to having such a loyal audience here so thank you very 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 much I hope you're doing well and staying safe in these uncertain times and I will see you very soon oh I have some announcements coming up but for once this video doesn't really have any announcements so hope you enjoyed this and be kind and keep striving i have to eat my lunch <laughs> so bye